Hey everybody, this is a uh, 1969 Toyota FJ40. This Land Cruiser we've named Fern. Uh, obviously you can tell by the color uh, why we named it that, but this is a project that we've just finished up. Um, this wasn't something that we did by ourselves. Um, we kind of joined forces and did this with uh, a shop that's about nine or 10 miles from here, uh, Voodoo Cruisers. Um, Andy and his guy, um, they're, they're, they're known uh, really well in the cruiser industry and uh, they do a lot of very nice um, restorations on Land Cruisers. Um, this client is a return customer of theirs uh, and he's one who lived out in Oregon and then just bought uh, another home in Utah and was looking for a cruiser that would kind of do more than the one that he had that was just re restored. And, and I guess what he what he meant by that was that something he could he could almost daily drive, and so once they started to have those conversations, you know that kind of landed um, in an area of unknowns for them. And one of those was the you know GM LS3, um, and then they wanted some nicer air conditioning system. And then he started to talk about German heated seats, and I think that that kind of spiraled into a spot where uh, another one of his guys that works for him knew about us and said that you know we do ls conversions we do some more of this stuff and so anyways uh one thing led to another and uh we ended up meeting up with andy and uh we just got started right away on this for them so it's been about a year or so but uh it's been a pretty big project um they brought us a really really good tub um andy says one of the best bodies and frames that, that he's ever come across so um a really good chassis that they already had powder excuse me already had powder coated um, they already rebuilt the axles um you know they already had a fuel tank for it um and then they had obviously already sourced the body um and then what we did was we took a, a brand new gm crate 495 horse ls3 um, and then mated that to an early 2000s brand new GM uh, NV4500. So that would have came in like a manual transmission gas three quarter ton truck. They were only made for a couple years, but we got one of those. <clears throat> and then advanced adapters, um, they adapted the, uh, the Toyota, the correct Toyota um, transfer case. Uh, so then Dylan and I built the transmission cross member, the motor mounts. Um, you know, we got all the pinion angles correct. Um, got the body on and then we went to work um, Trying to incorporate all the features that he wanted into the body, uh, you know without being too intrusive or Or changing this very far away from factory. So we took the body uh, We mounted rest of my air conditioning in it. Here, I'm gonna pop the door and hopefully the lighting's enough where y'all can see this um, Tell you what let me go open the other door but we, we tried to take what other people had done before with vintage air um, and go a little step further. Um, we took the evaporator box that Resto Mod makes. Um, it's a little smaller. The Bantam is what we've used in this situation. And, and we really, we, we tucked it up a lot higher um, than traditional air conditioning systems in the Land Cruisers. So it's tucked up and then all the, uh, you know, the, the ECU for the HVAC system, system is behind the glove box. So what we then did is we made a, a glove box that we've got room in here now for the ducting that comes up behind the EVAT box, but then also gave him storage in here, you know, like a traditional glove box. Now this glove box can come out if he ever has to service the, uh, the ECU for the HVA system or anything like that. We tucked in their little air conditioning knob or air conditioning vents that that were subtle and tasteful, um, as well as their controls. Um, these are the little stealth controls that they make that really match well with the factory interior of this Land Cruiser. Nothing looks out of place here. So you know, factory windshield wiper knob. Um, not to stray too far away from the air conditioning just yet, but another cool feature that we did was we took the factory heater box. This was all that was ever in a 69 Land Cruiser for HVAC. It had like a lever over here where you could either blow floor heat out or you could lift it up and you would blow defrost heat out. So what we did was instead of putting more dash vent locations in the dash, um, we welded up all the holes on this box and put one duct hole in the top so that when you've got it on dash vent, um, you've got air that blows out the side vents and then you've got air that comes out these two vents too. So pretty neat. And really we've, we found it to be um, pretty useful in the winter time too. We've, we've kind of left the dash heat on um, and then just directed these kind of towards, you know, our bodies and, and this one kind of blows more towards our feet and legs and it's worked out really good. 
Um, to continue on the dash, um, I'm gonna close this door because it's freezing. So hopefully you guys can see, it's not too dark in here, but um, another thing that we did was we put these Schielman, um really nice German seats in here. Um, and we've used these, well these were actually probably the first set that we ever used, and we were turned on to these by the owner, and since then have used these in quite a few of our builds, but they are beautiful, um, extremely comfortable, and then we built the base for these where we dropped the seats down a couple inches and then allowed them to go, go back. So you really sit in a very ergonomic, comfortable seating position. Um, so then we have the heater switches um, for the passenger and driver's heaters. Um, Another really neat feature inside the interior of this is that, you know, we, we put a modern column, we put a, an I did it column, and, and that does a couple things. Is that, you know, it, it gave us more room, you know, out in the engine bay to build the intermediate steering shaft. We, we bought a shorter shaft and got rid of the old steering box, put a, a Saginaw box uh, off a J20 pickup on the frame. And then, so we get in now have the ignition switch on the dash or on the column, so it's not on the dash. But that left us with bizarre steering options, steering wheel options, um, just really car looking stuff, right? So one of the things that we came up with with the owner was to to take the steering wheel that was in the truck um, and shrink it, so to speak. You know, they were like 17, 17 and a half inches. And so we recreated, you know, on the computer, uh, you know, a, a program so that we could cut a billet wheel that was identical in design to the to the factory Toyota column that incorporated the correct horn brit button you know even the bezel that it that it attaches to you know snaps into this wheel that we machined but um it shrunk to 15 inch diameter which is perfect um and then it's splined and tapered for the i did it column so it bolts on it looks just like it's supposed to and that's probably one of the neatest features uh, of the inside of this truck. I just, I really love it. So um, we then did some German square weave carpet mats and had our friend Joel uh, boarded those for us. So the truck's got some German square weave carpet in it. Uh, and then you can see in the rear we've uh, upholstered or had the rear seats upholstered to match the fronts. And then uh, we had Relicate leather uh, up north, uh, northeast uh, do us a, a kind of a storage bag or a travel bag to match the upholstery and then there's more of that shielman fabric um that the headliners made out of too so i don't know if we can focus on that but it, honestly it turned out really really good there's some speakers incorporated into the truck in places we've got led um, overhead lighting as well as led lighting you know underneath uh you know convenience lighting so you can see uh, your purse or whatever craps down there so dakota digital gauges uh, on the dash, beautiful, look just like factory. Um, Jonathan Ward, actually, this is his design, and we buy these gauges directly from him. Um, they are Dakotas, but he has his own correct font, whatever, to make them look just like factory. So those are super trick. Another super trick thing is the electric parking brake. I had the parking brake set, and you can now hear it letting off. So you pull up somewhere, uh, put it in, you know, shut the key off, and place the emergency brake. So that'll pull tight, and then uh, it'll even leave you a little indicator down here to tell you that the brakes are on. So, pretty neat stuff. All right, under the hood, we've got that LS3, along with a custom wizard radiator. Um, they build these for us to spec, uh, put the fans on them like we want, and then we do, you know, everything else. We ceramic coated it uh, with Cerakote Glacier Black. Uh, we did the overflow in the same. The air intake is um, low gloss black to match, you know, the our style, I guess. Um, got an ARB onboard air compressor over here, so you can uh, chuck an air hose to run a, you know, run a tire, uh, run a hose, a, a tire inflator or a small air tool something like that uh, and then it does have front and rear air lockers um, manual transmission we put our Telton master on there like we do damn near everything we build um, machined billet reservoir from mark bowler and uh, man that's about all that's in this engine bay really uh, just super tidy uh, I love it this way so 
vintage looking. Uh, these are the anniversary limited edition um, M8274 winch. Uh, beautiful, strongest, baddest winch. Um, got some hidden little LED fog lights in the front. Um, all the exhaust system is stainless steel. Um, that's all also been uh, high temp coated. This is probably filthy under here because we've been trying to drive it in the rain and, and every other condition that we could. But you can see some of the some of the components under here. Like I said, it's all stainless, all routed real tidy. Um, stainless bellows. It does have a catalytic converter and a boiler muffler. Man, just all the all the cool neat stuff. <clears throat> Round back, all the vintage emblems that are cool. Some LED reverse lights. But I guess that's about it. I'm gonna fire it up and see what you think. <laughs> 